Welcome to the CompTIA A Plus 220-1101 or Core 1 exam. Here's a special video I made, my three pitfalls. So before I start this video, I'll talk about the testing software I used. I'm a big fan of Total Tester from Total Seminars, and there's many reasons why I prefer it over other testers. It gives you very detailed feedback of what domains you need to improve on and how you scored on each assessment. There are pre-assessments, there are mid-assessments, and there are post-assessments while you are studying to track your progress. Let's take a look here. You can see that there's practice mode and there's exam mode. So if you're not quite ready and you want help, you can do practice mode and it can give you hints or advice. But if you want to simulate test day, you can choose exam mode which will not provide you any assistance. Here's an example of the one I took today. It's 90 questions and 90 minutes. However, if you want to, you can customize the settings. You can change the amount of questions, the length of time. You can even change the domains that you want to study in case you want to focus on a different exam objective. You can even study it by chapter because a lot of these reflect on the chapters in the textbook that they use. Okay, without further ado, pitfall number one, projectors. Now, I have worked in different environments where I supported projectors for business meetings and different audiovisual components. However, I didn't have the amount of experience needed to know technical terms for projectors. So that's pitfall number one, watch out for that. Make sure you study these terminologies. You need to know what a lumen is. So a lumen is a measure of light. You can tell the intensity of this light signal by lumen. Some of the standard projectors use about 1000 to 2000 lumens. Okay, next one that caught me off guard is the throw. The throw is the size over the distance. So what is this size if you go this far? So being able to measure the throw will help you when you need to assign a particular projector for a particular room or maybe um, environment where there's too much light or not enough light. So be careful for that. Uh, and then the source. Traditionally, older projectors use lamps or fluorescent lights. But today, it's more common to see LED and laser lights, so you may need to troubleshoot scenarios like that and maybe make recommendations to users or clients for those types of projectors. Pitfall number two is a funny one because I like virtualization quite a bit and I use it in some of my videos that I post on YouTube as well. So if you've been following me, you will see that I use virtualization so let's look at what happened. I think what threw me off was knowing the specific terminologies. I have experience playing with virtualization at home, but how well do I really know these words? So think of a guest as a virtual machine. That's the actual virtual software that's running. Think of a hypervisor as a platform. Examples could be maybe VirtualBox or VMware or Hyper-V by Windows Server. A host is a physical component, the actual hardware that has the VM on it. And be very careful with acronyms, especially related to cloud-based services. One that threw me off guard was infrastructure as a service. It's quite common these days to see big data centers move to the cloud so knowing the difference between software as a service or infrastructure as a service is going to really help you on the A-plus examination. Here's a question that I missed. A virtual machine is a da -da -da OS running within a da -da -da OS. I wasn't quite sure if I should say guest or host or hypervisor. This one made me confused, and that's why I put it in one of the pitfalls. Okay, and for the last one, pitfall number 3, 802.11.
that's also caught me off guard a bit. I thought I would be fine um, troubleshooting wireless technologies or understanding the hardware, but it's just too much. It's too overwhelming. There's too many numbers and factors to memorize. So unless you've worked in sales and you know these products and technologies very well, the chance of you missing something because of a technical number or specification is pretty high. So let's take a look here. Frequency, you'll need to know the different frequencies that these technologies operate in. So they're not all the same. Especially taking a look at N and G, I see those on the tests a lot. So 802.11N works in multiple frequencies, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, but G only works in one. Okay, speed is going to be different. It's very funny that B is slower than A. That could be a pitfall, watch out for that. And G doesn't even change the speed of frequency however N does significantly. I don't believe AC and AX are on the exams, so you can just focus on these. But look how different they are. Very confusing. You'll need to know the range of each band and why some interference happens with some technologies. Some of the older technologies have interference in EFI, so like refrigerators or microwaves might cut off a signal. That could be on the exam. Small office, home office. What would be appropriate for a corporate environment? What would be appropriate for a very small office? You'll need to know those differences. And I indeed missed a MIMO question. Which of the following wireless standards uses multiple input and multiple output? I took a total guess because I didn't study enough and I couldn't remember. But the answer is actually N. Because it operates in multiple frequencies, it can input at one and output at the, uh, in the other. So that is a pitfall to watch out for. I hope that helps in your studies. Good luck and thank you for watching.